Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm. I am back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail. And this is our playlist for the breeding program for our jumbos. Uh, we have the playlist on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm. Um, and we are going step by step through the entire breeding process of what we look at, how we handle it, what our standards are for our jumbo wilds. Um, so we've collected the eggs on video and posted it. We've candled the eggs. Uh, we've moved the eggs to lockdown. We've moved them to the brooder. Uh, week four we weighed, week five we weighed, and today is week six. Uh, we've done all of that on camera. Today we did not uh, film while we were um, weighing the birds because there was some things that I want to discuss instead. So I'm going to give you the numbers of the averages for week four, week five, and week six between the males and the females, but we're also going to discuss what else we look at when we're picking and choosing our next breeders. Um, so the averages for week four, the males were 7.5, the females were 7.98 in ounces. Um, so what we consider to be the threshold uh, for week four is 7.5. Um, so anything that was below 7.5, we would have taken out. Um, there's two different breeding styles that we do. Uh, we do a massive hatch, you know, 2,000 eggs at one time. Uh, and then every week we just uh, discard the ones that are not making weight and move them somewhere else. Uh, and then this program, which we're doing, is there's four different cages in. We want to know what the average weight of each cage is at full maturity. So we're not... Uh, moving any other quail, they're staying all together. Uh, week five, the average male was 8.77. The average female was 8.802 in ounces. Uh, and our cutoff for that was 8.4. Uh, so they exceeded our expectations quite a bit in both areas in that. Um, now I can tell you that at the end of this, the males will weigh less than the females. Uh, the males tend to uh, increase drastically until about week seven, uh, and then they kind of level off a little bit more. They'll keep going higher, uh, but not at an excessive speed like they are now. Uh, the hens will continue to rise uh, and overtake them. Now, week six was today. We did weigh, uh, and our averages for the males were 9.61. Our females average was 10.11, and our average uh, our threshold for week six was 9.4. Um, so they both exceeded, the females exceeded extremely well, so I'm very proud of that. Um, so those are the averages for week four, week five, and week six for our Jumbo Wilds, uh, if you kind of wanted to keep that standard as well, or uh, at least that's a baseline for you. But we also took the time to look at some other things today, which is what I want to discuss. Uh, we wanted to look at some statistics such as male to female ratio. Uh, we wanted to look at the growth rate. We wanted to look at legs, eyes, beak, feather pattern, so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to br briefly describe each one. I will try not to bore you, uh, but I do have some really cool stats that I think you could use to uh, infiltrate your breeding program. So male to female ratio. We had 55% hatch out male. Uh, which means 45% would, would have hatched out female. Uh, and that's about where we're looking at. We, we expect a 50-50. Half will be males, half will be females, uh, but that is not a science. Uh, so sometimes we've had 10% be males uh, and sometimes we've had 92% to be males. Uh, so it's just a, on average, it'll be 50-50. Um, so we looked at that, that looks pretty good. That looks in the range that we're looking for. Uh, we looked at beaks. Uh, we looked for long beaks. We also looked for cross beaks. There was none. Uh, so that's, that's great because usually that is a genetic issue. Sometimes it is uh, a development in the egg issue, but usually, uh, usually it's a genetic thing that we have to uh, breed out. There was none of that. <clears throat> we looked at eyes. Um, eyes such as uh, how wide they are, uh, what the look of, what they look like, uh, no glassy, no, no different color. You know, we wanted them to be a standard. Um, and uh, we had one that we don't know if it was picked on and kind of healed, uh, but that is out of the program completely. Um, and so that will not be going into any breeding program at all, whether it's 
uh, the you know feather sex bull or mixed cage or sex links it's just is not going into a program at all um, legs we looked at legs we found two that we felt were a little bit thinner uh, and less stable than the rest um, so we pulled those out um, and we are going to keep them for breeders because their sizes were quite nice uh, but we are going to slow them down on their growth so they don't get too large for their own for their own good really um, and those will go into a different cage which I will explain in just a few minutes um, we talked about weight already uh, we looked at the growth I did want to mention this so we do two different breeding standards for uh, the jumbo wilds um, we do a massive hatch which is we put in two to three thousand eggs at a time and we weigh them starting at week four and this is our standard and if they're on the wrong side of the standard after we weigh then they go into a separate room a uh, separate cage and uh, they're not part of the breeding program at all um, with this we have four different cages that we're keeping track of um, so we want to know what the average weight was for each cage at the end uh, so for example you know cage 10 uh, we'll say you know and we don't know yet because we're not there but at full maturity they averaged 12.8 ounces and then cage 15 averaged 13.7 ounces or whatever the case may be uh, but that helps us kind of plan for our next year's uh, breeding program so we do both of those uh, so you might want to think of that the one great piece of advice that I can give you is for a breeding program it's really nice to have multiple cages so even if you have smaller cages having multiple cages is really really uh, convenient and to me the best practice um, and then we talked about average uh, so that's pretty much kind of what we talked about uh, and what we did today uh, week seven is kind of our threshold um, again if we're doing our breeding program like this such as per cage we leave the males and the females together um, until week seven at week seven um, when the males start mating and start being active uh, the hens tend to slow down on their weight, on their growth. So we're going to be separating them th this week, but keeping track of which cage is which. Um, as far as the massive hatch goes, when we hatch out two to 3,000 eggs, uh, we separate males to from females at three weeks old and just keep them apart the whole time because it doesn't matter what cage they came from uh, in that aspect. Um, so we do separate things like that. Uh, and that's kind of the information that I have for you this week. Remember, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm live right here on our YouTube channel to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, and it's just a live question and answer session. Uh, we do have a lot of information to give out, so make sure you join us. It's a lot of fun. Um, and if you have any questions about this, uh, I will be happy to answer them. Uh, or you can comment below and I'll be happy to, uh, to respond as soon as I can. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can join us Sunday at 7 p.m. because we've got some really big announcements and some things that we really want to talk about. Um, so I hope to see you there. Everybody stay safe and we'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks.